The Lord's blessings and peace be with you today, April 1st. I have to be honest with you, I recorded all the segments for this service and then realized I had it set on time lapse. And some of you may think, oh, that would have been nice to watch the whole service in uh, 30 seconds, but there was no sound and I know you wouldn't want to have that. But anyway, the Lord's peace to you. Today we're continuing uh, with our final service for Wednesdays during this Lenten season and we will hear from John the Baptist. And our opening hymn is going to be, O Christ, You Walked the Road, hymn 424. again the fourth setting of our divine service we make our beginning in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen our help is in the name of the lord who made heaven and earth if you O god kept a record of sins O lord who could stand but with you there is forgiveness therefore you are feared since we are gathered to hear god's word and call upon him in prayer and praise let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We take that moment in personal confession. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we sing together the Kyrie, our prayer to the Lord to have mercy.
to hear our three scripture readings for this Lenten service. First from Isaiah 40, verses 1 to 5. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our epistle from 1 Peter 3, verses 18 to 22. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but being made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In Mark's epistle, or Mark's gospel, excuse me, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11, as John the Baptist prepares the way. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, after me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately, he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let's unite our voices as we confess that faith in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And our sermon hymn is hymn 590, Baptized into Your Name Most Holy.
mine is a very simple existence. A little honey, a locust or two, and I'm good to go. It doesn't get much simpler than that. And my clothing? A garment of camel's hair and leather belt around my waist. Why the camel's hair? To represent repentance to go along with the message of God gave me to preach. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. My name is John, John the Baptist. That's my name since I baptized people, encourage them to repent of their sins, make themselves ready to receive God's true gift of a savior from sin, his son, Jesus. God is coming. Quit wasting your time. Put the, away the things that you do wrong in your life. Admit your failures and your rebelling against God and be clean on the inside, just as being baptized makes you clean on the outside. That's my message I have for people of my day. And I would offer them a baptism of repentance. I knew that soon there was one coming who had a baptism even greater than mine. His would be of the Holy Spirit and of fire. My job was to prepare the people for that day to come. And then it happened. I re remember the day Jesus came to me while I was baptizing in the Jordan River. He came up to me and said he needed to be baptized by me. But I said to him, no, Lord, I need to be baptized by you. But he insisted that this must be done in order to fulfill all righteousness. So I agreed and baptized Jesus, the Messiah, the one who would wash away the sins of the world. Right after I baptized Jesus, an incredible thing happened. Immediately, once he came up out of the water, the heavens were open, and I saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Wow, I will never forget that moment. God appeared, and he showed himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Savior of the world had come, and now the kingdom of heaven was truly at hand. Do you remember your baptism? When you entered God's kingdom and became a part of his family? Your baptism is a daily reminder of how much God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die on the cross and rise from the dead, so the kingdom of heaven could be yours forever. It's that simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, your true Savior from sin and death, and you will be saved. Believe and be baptized. That's what God wants for me, and that's what he wants for you too. It's such a simple message of love and hope that God wants to share with the whole world. And it's so amazing that he has chosen you and me to share this message to all who will hear and will listen. Perhaps you can relate to my story, because my story is really your story. God's grace, mercy, and peace be to you through our Heavenly Father and through His Son, Jesus Christ. As we gather today for another Lenten service, this is uh, Wednesday, April 1st. It's the fifth and the last of our Wednesday Lenten services. Good to have you with us today as we uh, share the story of uh, John the Baptist. You just heard a little bit about John and what his life was like. We're going to talk more about John, and I want to share... Just for our text today from Mark 1, and just to use a couple of the verses from our gospel reading for today. We'll start with verse 4. And so John came baptizing in the desert region, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And then it goes on to talk about John and the lifestyle that he had. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. And here's the key part that we want to think about today. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So as we hear God's word, we get ready to hear about John and what he has done. But our, our theme for this whole season has been remembering Jesus and his words. Do this in remembrance of me as we remember what he has done, how he has prepared us to receive all that he has done on, his, on the cross, on his death and resurrection. 
But we look back and we've been doing that. We've been remembering all kinds of characters, how it began in the garden with, with the sin that entered the world and why the need for the Savior had to come. So we've talked about so many different characters all through the different weeks that we've had in our Lenten series. But before we get into John, I want to just ask another question real quick. Do you remember what normal looks like? Do you remember the last time you had the opportunity to have a meal with your family, just go out to a restaurant or with your spouse? to go to a ball practice with your children, to just be out and about at a thunder game or some other event or activity. Normal, what does that look like? But you know, the interesting thing is we can look back and we can remember those times, those normal events in our lives, and as we look back at them, we get to look ahead to say, you know what, we're gonna do that again. And we look forward to those times, to those times we gather together, like in this place, here we have an empty room, but soon, Soon we'll be able to gather with God's people in this place and just celebrate who he is You know, I was looking the other day at uh, Psalm 77 and it really to me kind of spoke to To what we're going through and the challenges that we're facing today and maybe how we feel sometimes And I like the way the psalmist started out how he was really going through a tough time But how it changed and how he looked at things. And let me share this with you. This is uh, Psalm 77 I'm going to start with the first two verses I cried out to, to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord at night. I stretched out untiring hands, and my soul refused to be comforted. My heart mused and my spirit inquired, will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion. And I'm sure you may have heard that and, and maybe felt that. I'm sure people are experiencing and feeling, God, where are you in the midst of all this? Why aren't you making this go away? And we go through different times like that in our lives. But here's what the psalmist then goes back to. And here's what we need to remember as well. Then I thought to this I will appeal. The years of the right hand of the Most High. And here's the part I want you to hear. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will meditate on all your works. I will consider all your mighty deeds. Your ways, O oh God, are holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples, your mighty arm. You redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. What did the psalmist do when he was going through a tough time? He stopped and remember he remembered all that God had done and all that God does in our lives and so you know that's what we've been doing as well we've uh, started with Adam and Eve in the garden and how they were distressed because they broke that relationship with God through sin and they went to hide but God looked for them and God made them a promise and he said there will be one coming who will forgive that sin God said I'm gonna take care of your past I want you to look forward to the future and what is to come and so he took the past and he said forget that look to the future we looked down the road and we talked a little bit about Abraham and the promise to Abraham and Sarah here they were old in age and yet they God said I'm gonna give you a son and they were like really a son at our age but God said it's gonna be more than that this son will be the one who will carry your name off into many generations and from that son will come the Savior Eventually will come a savior for all people from your from your loins. This will happen So Abraham and Sarah, what did they do? They believed and In their past they remember what God had done and they looked ahead to the future to know that God is true to his word And they stand stood in faith. They weren't perfect people But they were faithful people to listen to God and after Abraham we remember Moses and through Moses, even another man who really didn't want God to use him, God said, through you, I'm going to show you how I save, how I can redeem my people. And Moses trusted God. And Moses let God work through him to make a difference and to help lead the children of Israel out of Egypt to the promised land. After the children left the promised land or got into the promised land, they fell away. They forgot. They forgot all that God had done. And Nehemiah was the one who brought them back together. And on Ash Wednesday, we talked about Nehemiah. Had he said, we need to remember who our God is. We need to remember what he has done for us. 
We need to go back and remember who our God is. And he drew the people in to worship and remember. And then it came, the day. And Mary, God used Mary. God used a simple virgin lady to be the mother of Jesus, the Messiah. What a wonderful thing. You know, she, she chose, she said, let it me to be as you have said. And now the Savior was coming into the world. And that, that's where it leads us now to uh, John the Baptist. John the Baptist, who is the one who, to get us ready for this coming Messiah. John was a simple person. John wore simple clothes, camel's hair, ate simple food of locusts and honey. And he had a simple message. Repent and believe. Repent and be baptized. And he said, one is coming who is going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. One is coming whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. One is coming, and that's the Savior. That's the message that John came to give, the simple message. You know, I heard a story the other day where a gentleman was having a, a deadly illness that he was affected by, and, and he went to his doctor, and he told his doctor what was going on. His doctor said, ah, oh, you know what? I have just the thing for you. I've got the cure. And he wrote out a prescription for the man, and he gave the prescription to the gentleman. The gentleman took the prescription, he went home, and he stuck it up on his bulletin board and every time he wasn't feeling so good he went over and he looked at that prescription and he felt better and as the days went on he would look and maybe not maybe not always feel so good but one day he died he died because he never took the prescription and had it filled he just looked at it he just saw it there we have a cure we have a prescription for sin that god has given us so that we don't need to die. And that answer is God's Son, our Savior, sent from heaven to take away our sins. He is the one who is coming, who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So we remember our baptism. Now, you probably don't really remember your baptism if you were baptized as a baby, as an infant. But when we remember our baptism, we remember what happened in our baptism. We remember that the Holy Spirit came into our lives to give us faith. Even as a child, we had faith to believe who this Jesus was. God gave us faith. He made us a part of his family, and he gave us a life forever through his son, Jesus. So we remember our baptism. We remember all that it means for us. And the beauty is we get to remember our baptism every single day. Every day we get to remember how God has brought his son into our world to wash us clean of our sins and look forward to the future life that he has provided for us. Through our baptism, though, we need to take that in and remember it. We remember it by reading God's word and remembering the stories and remembering what God has to say to us to encourage us. We take in the, the works of baptism as we pray to God and ask him through difficult times to be with us and guide us and direct us. We remember our baptism as we live in service to one another and care for each other, care for our fellow man like many of you are doing in helpful ways even during this difficult time. And we remember our baptism as we share with others what the cure is all about, how God has given us his son Jesus to be our savior forever, our cure from sin. You know, this is, uh, this is something that, uh, it, it's a good time for us to remember. It's a good time for us to go through this Lenten season and remember as we get ready for, for the celebration of Holy Week and Easter, all the things that God has done, not just through his son, but how he made the promise happen many years ago. It's good to have the Bible characters to look at. It's good to remember those people that have been a part of our lives too. Uh, parents, grandparents, Sunday school teachers, pastors, those who have touched our lives in special ways. It's good to remember how they have made a difference for us in our lives. And it's good to remember that one day we will have an opportunity to be remembered too. We have a story. God, just like he was working through all those people, God is working in your life to make a difference as well. God is using you to tell his story. God wants you to touch and reach into the lives of others to share what his story is all about. We can be like John. We can be like John in just keeping it simple, in just simply serving and simply caring and simply sharing the message of the gospel of God who loves us so much that he sent his son to die on the cross to die and rise so we could have life with him forever. To remind people that the cure is Jesus. That we can forget about our past and our sins and we have a future to look forward to, heaven forever with his son and with him. 
We're getting ready to celebrate Holy Week once again, to watch Jesus' journey to Jerusalem, to the Lord's Supper where he comes to his disciples and he says, do this in remembrance of me. And every time we come to the communion rail, we remember that too, all that Jesus has done. We remember Jesus praying in the garden that this might be taken away from him, but knowing that this was necessary for our sake. We remember Calgary and Jesus dying on the cross for us. And we will remember the tomb, the empty tomb, where we see Jesus risen from the dead to give us life forever. So we take time to remember. We remember who this Jesus is, to remember how God cares us and loves us so much. And remember the one who gave his all for you. Amen. And I want to thank all of you who've been uh, sending in your tithes and offerings and again encouraging you to do that either by mail or on our web page or our text to give uh, MLCOKC all caps to 73256. So let's bring our prayer needs to the Lord first joining in the beautiful prayer that Christ has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for our general prayer uh, during this time of the COVID-19 virus, I'd like to use those petitions of the Lord's Prayer to, to lift each of us up and those who are on our hearts and minds today. Our Father, it is such a comforting thought, gracious God, to know that we can call, call out to you and cry out to you as our loving Heavenly Father, that you know our needs, but it's a blessing for us to be able to share them with you. We pray that we would hollow your name we pray that even in this time of difficulty, your kingdom would continue to come both to us and through us into the hearts and lives of others. Truly, may your will be done on earth. Thank you for all the ways you're providing for us and giving us our daily bread. And we thank you most of all, Lord Jesus, for the forgiveness that we have. And we pray that you would empower us, Holy Spirit, to, to be as forgiving of others as you have been of us. We pray that you would not lead us uh, into any temptation, gracious Father, but that you would continue to protect us and deliver us from the evil one. And especially during this time of the virus, we lift up those on our hearts today, those who need strength, those who need healing. We pray uh, special prayer protection for our medical people and first responders who are putting themselves in harm's way as they care uh, for people who've come down with the virus. Continue to give wisdom 
uh, to our earthly leaders, but most of all, Lord, keep us mindful that yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. We close our worship thinking about the ministry of John the Baptist with all Christians who have been baptized in 596 verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. And after singing that hymn, truly may you go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.